I was literally broke, busted, disgusted, sleeping on my parents' couch, couldn't find, figure out my life, had three degrees, nobody would hire me, ended up from the couch to living in a hotel. And I said to God one day, God, there has to be more to life than this. I know you didn't call me to struggle. I know you didn't call me to toil. I'm intelligent, I'm smart. Why, why aren't things going for me the way I know you called them? And so this is the season of my life where the Lord broke the spirit of poverty and lack off of my life in these four steps. The first thing that I had to do was I had to repent. And I know a lot of people don't like the R word, but it was true. God, I repent for not trusting you. God, I repent for mismanaging money. God, I repent for robbing Peter to pay Paul. God, I repent for trusting the credit card companies more than I trusted you. Repentance, clean hands and a pure heart is the way to ascend, right? So I repented. Repentance also isn't just God forgive me. It's a turning away. It's saying, God, I'm not going to do that anymore. Second thing that I had to do was I had to partner with the word. The Lord had me go in the Bible and find every financial scripture that I can find. And I had to take a pen and write it out. There was no copy and paste. There's no printing out. I had to write it out so that as I'm writing it, it's, I'm coming, I'm, bring, I'm bringing a connection to it. Um, I'm seeing it. And after I begin to write it and write all of those out, every day I would have to meditate on them day and night. I would have to meditate on them day and night, reading them over and over and over. And what God was doing, he was allowing the word of God to break the strongholds in my mind about lack, about poverty. He was allowing me to... Um, break all of those thoughts that I had that was not of him and then allowing me to com now confess the word over my finances, confess the word over my life. So I did that. Repentance was number one. Two was partnering with the word. Three was working the word, which I kind of a little bit alluded to in the last thing that I was saying. Working the word means taking the word, saying it all day, reading it over and over and over and over, coming into partnership with the word. You have to remember that if you are now in covenant with lack and poverty, you're going to have to divorce lack and poverty. You've been with them way too long. And so now you have to take the word of God to refresh you, to renew your mind. You have to also renew your mind so that you can see yourself being out of where you are. This is where a lot of people mess it up. They can't see themselves beyond where you are. And then um, after you work the word is obedience. What is God telling you to do? At that time, God was telling me to create a Facebook page. It did not make sense to my life at all. Why would I create a Facebook page? I'm broke, busted, disgusted, trying to figure things out. It didn't make sense. But when you really love God and you really have a heart for him, you cannot tell him no. So I made that Facebook page. Not, I had no expectations, no connections, nothing. The first day I launched that page, 10,000 followers. Day nine, 100,000 followers. Within seven months, it was at millions of followers. But a month into me doing it, somebody says, hey, the Lord told me to give you a logo. And in my mind, a logo, that means it's going to be a business. And then shortly after that, somebody says, hey, I want to hire you because I know that you know marketing. So I want to hire you and bring you on my team. Because I said yes and followed what God called me to do, the provision was already there. There's provision waiting for you, but it's it trapped in your obedience. When you obey God, the possibilities are endless, but a lot of people don't want to obey God. And then I'll add in this bonus one. Another thing is you're going to have to release offense. If you're offended at anything or, if, you know, something, somebody dis did you wrong in the area of money or anything like that, you're going to have to let that go because God's hand will not move if there's some hardness in your heart. If you want God to move freely, you're going to have to surrender it and let it go. Maybe that means coming back a couple of times, um, you know, if it really, really bothered you. But this is all building your relationship with God. You're praying, you're reading the word, you're connecting with God. You're learning, you're learning, God, help me to trust you. Help me to trust you. Literally, God used those steps to break that spirit off of my life. And then before I knew it, during the pandemic, while everybody else was in the house, I was in first class going this place and going this place. I go to sleep in Las Vegas, wake up in California at church, doing all kinds of things because I allow God to do the work in me. And I also showed up and did whatever God called me to do. I did the work. You want to, if you want a financial breakthrough, you're going to have to do what God has called you to do. You're going to have to do the work. And for anybody that comes in the comment section, but what is he asking me to do? That's, that means you need to go into prayer and say, Father, what do you call me to do in this season? What are you teaching me in this season? Your relationship with God matters. That's the real breakthrough is your relationship with your heavenly father. If you like content like this, 
want to know more about breaking the spirit of poverty, breaking the spirit of lack, follow me for more.